Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, it's Tuesday. And on Tuesday, we oftentimes give the sounder, which of course is CQ, CQ, CQ. Uh, we're willing to talk to anybody, <laughs> and that includes you. And so, please keep in mind, this is for you. Interesting ideas where we're just simply trying to figure out how we can help one another live life a little bit better in the midst of the changing world we're in, in the midst of the chaos that we are in, when we see evil triumph in too many ways and where we're looking for how we can be at least in some way a part of the better world, how we can be a good to great in coming alongside and making a difference in our world and perhaps the world that will work in some way. And uh, this, of course, is the Christmas week here in the United States. It's uh, going to be, it seems, a rather uh, bad weather time. And, of course, uh, that gets in the way of all the good things that people want to do, uh, families together, travel. So we're trying to deal with that, too. So what I would simply like to do on this Tuesday is take off a little bit of where we were yesterday when we talked about the miracle of Hanukkah. And I trust that a few of you uh, actually took my advice and, uh, hey, found a little bit more about that story. And then that question, yeah, well, do you really believe in miracles? Do you really believe that there are things that can transcend the supernatural and uh, make a difference? Well, today I'd like to talk to you about what I call M3P. M3P. Now, that's not MP3. That's the name of the audio file which has changed the world, the one that I'm using right now. So uh, I don't need to have it on a CD. I don't need to have it on anything except the fact that this digital MP3 file allows me to uh, record this message and uh, play it back all around the world. The uh, MP3 file has changed the world. Simple little uh, creation. But uh, this is a character creation, which I'm going to recommend, and it's called the uh, M3P, and if you'll give me just a few minutes, maybe uh, I can at least challenge you to think a little bit differently about how you're going to live 23. That's right, M3P, you know, in 23. The program begins right now. <laughs> Many years ago, I had the opportunity to uh, do a teacher's dream in terms of what it was. I, I was obviously a young man. I was in my late 20s, and I was a, a teacher at a significant high school in the state of Minnesota in the United States. And because of something, somebody trusted me. I worked very hard to be a good teacher and a bit of a performer, and so uh, they decided to totally reorganize the curriculum for the 11th grade for world history and social studies. And since I happened to be in that place and space, uh, I was given the authority to basically decide, along with a few other people, what we would actually teach people. These are young men and women, 16, 17 years of age, that we hoped would make a difference. First of all, we decided that people need to actually discover a little bit about their own story, and that is the history of the Western world, uh, where most of them had come from. And uh, we put together a very interesting story place. And one of the chapters that I had was called The Caesar and the Christ. And that was taken from... Uh, uh, a hero of mine, a man named Will Durant, who had, <laughs> as someone said, had been given the assignment uh, to, to write a term paper on world history, and he landed up spending his life writing about 12 
huge books on the entire history of the Western world, and it was written in a way that was a, a popularization. In fact, it was uh, the Book of the Month Club uh, feature for many, many years. Caesar and the Christ. And in effect, uh, I pointed out that two conflicting ideas came into the world. And uh, who's going to win? Who's going to lose? What's going to happen? And that was my story. But I also was given the opportunity to uh, teach a class, and many people thought it was rather silly, philosophy that men and women live by. And here we are offering this to 16 and 17 year olds. Who in the world is going to sign up for a philosophy course, you said? Well, I stuck by it, and what happened is I... <laughs> Eventually, I had three full sections of young adults who were interested enough to take the class. And many significant things happened as maybe for the first time they were really challenged to think differently about life and uh, the life they were living and where they were going. To this very day, and that goes back many, many years, I still occasionally hear from somebody who tells me that that made a difference in their life. Well, one of the books that struck me was a book called Preface to Morals, and it was written by a famous uh, early 20th century pundit, uh, a major writer and speaker throughout the world. His name was Walter Lippmann, and you can check him out. He was the Walter Cronkite plus for my generation, and I, I don't know who would be the equivalent. We probably don't have the equivalent for this generation. But the book, The Preface to Morals, was based on a, a philosophy called Stoicism that emerged from the Roman world at that particular time of the Christian time. And it was a personified by one of the Roman emperors, one of the good ones, named Marcus Aurelius. And here's what he said, and I underlined it. He simply said this, The sad fact is that we all grow older, but most of us don't grow up. The sad fact is we all grow older, but most of us don't grow up. And that struck me. That has struck me for a half a century. Am I a grown-up? What does it mean to be a grown-up? And so that was always a challenge. Well, how's this going to the M3P? What I have discovered now is I challenge men and women of thoughtfulness and thankfulness to say, Take the M word, maturity. Maturity. Something we talk about, something we admire. What does it mean for you to be and embrace maturity? What does it take for you in this world to be a real grown-up? There we go. Maturity. Now, what I've also discovered... Please let me go back to some of my teaching when I discovered that I had not been successful and I had tried to figure out why I wasn't successful. And I, I came up with the thought, the idea, that only 3% of the population are in a position to know who they are, what they want, and where they're going, and what they're going to do and they're going to do it well. Only 3%. You may want to challenge that. I think it's probably pretty true. And so I said, something about me has to have a strong element of mastery. You've got to be good. Maybe real good. Maybe great at something. And uh, it might not be philosophy, 
it might be plumbing. <laughs> and as someone said, you know, if your ideas leak, no damage. If your pipes leak, lots of damage. Plumbers are more important than philosophers. And for the most part, I would agree. There's nothing uh, more needed when you need them is the master plumber. And they never teach that in any of the major colleges and universities, but obviously <laughs> civilization could not exist as we know it today if there weren't a whole bunch of master plumbers. So there we go. Maturity and mastery. Okay, let's flip into where we're going. Mystery. The ability to deal with mystery and perhaps to figure out where you stand. The story that is going to be celebrated in the Christmas programs all around the world <laughs> don't make sense <laughs> if you think incorrectly think wrongly if you do not believe in mystery a virgin shall conceive <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> how could that be that's what Mary said you know I'm sorry how can that be? And then she made a rather interesting statement that means she embraced the mystery and almost a term that we would almost laugh at today. It said that when a, a man uh, takes advantage of a woman uh, in a not very good way is that he had her his way with her. He had his way with her. And basically Mary said to the angel and to God, have your way with me. And the whole thing, the whole story is a mystery. <laughs> Think about it. It certainly is something that we believe, those of us who follow the tradition, that it is history. But it is much more than history. <laughs> it is a profound mystery. And we are called to embrace the mystery, not on the basis of what we know or what makes sense or the way the world works as we see it. It's a mystery. And can you live with mystery? I also discovered that mystery is also a personal quality that we should try and cultivate. There's great strength and there's great power if people can't quite figure you out. Remember that. There's a lot of power if people can't quite figure you out. But they know they can trust you. Can't quite figure him out but he is good. You can trust him. Remarkable people embrace mystery and live rather comfortably with the whole idea. Hey, we're at 13 minutes. Gives me just a few minutes to talk about the P and uh, M3P. And that's what we'll do as we finish up. Here we go. A young man who I had a long conversation with one time, uh, and uh, he was very nasty to me, but I forgave him. But eventually we made it up uh, because I challenged him on a couple of things, and, and I was right, and he was wrong. That's just the way it was. But in a recent thing that he wrote, he was with me. He said, if you want to be grown up, you have to embrace paradox. And this is what I call number three in the great list of what it takes to live well. Paradox is the ability to say, this is true. 
But this is the opposite. Which is right and which is wrong, and you can answer yes by saying the ability to hold in your heart and mind and spirit the mystery of things being opposite, but both being true. The first shall be last. (laughs) What does that mean? From death can come life. What does that mean? The ability to embrace a paradox will be part of what makes us a little bit mysterious. Give us a deep sense of mastery, and probably it is the ability to get away from the black and white world and not deal just in gray, but to understand that we live in a mystery. And we are called to live well in that mystery. As a, the saint entrepreneur, Paul the Apostle, the follower of Jesus, said, right now, everything we see is like a faded, broken, gray mirror. We never see very clearly. And so can we live with that, and can we continue to seek, as I say, Since we last met, since we last talked, what is clearer to you now? I hope you'll take some of these uh, a little bit philosophical terms to light. That's right. At this time, it's good to think about, yeah, are miracles possible? Well, mastery, mystery, and maturity and the ability to embrace the power of paradox and use it for good might be just what is needed at this time. I'm Stan Houston. Please reach out to me. I can help you. StanHouston at gmail.com. StanHouston at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you because we want you to be a part of this exploration, this expedition, um, This uh, somewhat entertaining, but hopefully inspiring, educating, and motivating program called Interesting Ideas. All the best to you as we prepare for this holiday season and to live it fully. Take care and bye for now.